G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm looking at the Walters Fencing Hand Winder. This is the sort of tool that if you're doing kilometres of rebuilding of fences is going to make your life a whole lot easier. I'm going to show you how it assembles. I'm going to put it through its paces with a little small simulation to see if it'll wind up multiple wire, barbed wire and plain. And then I'm going to take it out to a real farm and put it through its paces on several hundred metres of really old rusty wire that would be an absolute pain to wind up and remove without it. Don't forget guys, if you like this week's video, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Now let's get into it and see how this winder works. Okay, so we've got our wire set up for this quick trial of the winder and I'll explain what we've got. We've got a bundle of five plane wires on bare ground. Normally, when you're cleaning up after a fire, you will find that the ground is fairly bare. Next up, we've got a strand of barbed wire, once again, on plain ground. And last but not least, we've got a strand of barbed wire that's all caught up deliberately in rushes and long grass with lots and lots of figure eight knots in it. This would normally be a real pain in the neck to get wound up. Now all we've got to do is set up the winder and we can try all these different types of wire. Let's see how easy it is to put on the back of the ute. Let's go through the basic components. First off, we've got the main body of the winder where the coil is going to develop. This is a stepped winder that's got an angled drive and it's got sealed bearings, front and rear, that allow it to slide onto a tongue that is attached to a hitch receiver mount. Now you can also get a tray side receiver mount. And then lastly but not least, you've got the front part of the winder that clicks on and off simply with a locking mechanism to allow you to get easy access to the coil of wire once you've wound it. This all fits into your standard receiver hitch on the back of your ute and you're set up and ready to go in under two minutes. Now this has got a locking clamp on it and you will need a socket set to put all this together. Next up, you've got the wire guide extension, which also has the shaft that I've already bolted on that holds the whole wire winder together. Now I'm putting the wire winder on the driver's side of the vehicle. It slides in here easily and we put it together with a bolt. Now comes time to install the winder onto the shaft. At this point, I'm going to remind you about a simple rule. Always lubricate your shaft. You don't have to nip it up ultra tight, you just need it to not wobble. Line up the slots in the front plate of the winder with the tabs and then engage the automatic locking mechanism. Now just because we're working with a really safe machine doesn't mean that wire is inherently safe. And I will remind you, no matter what you're using, always wear some safety glasses before you start winding up the bitey stuff. Now I was originally curious as to why the receiver hitch comes with this bolted plate to hold it on and it wasn't just simply drilled. But then of course you have to realise this is designed to work with a variety of utes, trays and trucks, all that have different measurements. This allows you to use this machine with any vehicle with enough adjustment space to fit perfectly onto the one that you're working with. Now it should be as simple as feeding the wire through the guide and hooking on to one of the slots in the winding mechanism. Let's start winding up the barb that's fouled up in all the reeds and the long grass with lots of figure eight knots in it. We counted about four and see how it handles about a hundred meters. All I have to do now is just start winding. Now that we've completely wound the wire up, all I have to do is take the hook from the chain strainers off the wire, feed it through, we'll bind this up with some cable ties, and then we can take the front off and dispose of our coil of wire or store it for running out in a spinner. Because we've wound it up properly, it'll fit in a spinner and it'll roll out properly.
Now this wouldn't be a review if we didn't put the machine through its paces. So this time I've got it off on about a 30 degree angle to a longer stretch of barbed wire that's running out on plain ground. Let's see how it handles that with the wire feeder with barb being off so much from the line of wire. Once again, I pull through, insert in one, to the, in one of the slots and just start winding. And straight off with your wire. Easy as. Last test is five plain wires off the one fence at the one time. So I've put a hook in the end of each wire and I simply put each one individually into a slot, holding them all in place. Now I've got all five wires connected. Let's start winding and see how easy it is. This is a one-handed operation once you get going. It's super easy. Just when you get to the end of the coil, when you're winding up all five wires, just put a little bit of tension on yourself when you get to the end. But otherwise, this is going to wind the wires up so quick and easy. If you want to wind an entire fence up in one go, this is the machine for you. Now one of the five wires was a little bit longer in the bundle, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm just going to wrap around the bundle before I take the front off, and that'll keep the coil pack together. Once again, Release the front. And even though I've got five lots of wire in there, they release without too much of a drama at all. Now, one of the reasons why we're playing around with this winder today is we're actually trialling it for Blazade, is that right? That's right. Phil, you're one of the volunteers and one of the coordinators for Blazade? That's right, and uh, we have a lot of, spend a lot of time winding up wire, so if we can put a machine like this that we can wind up a whole fence in a matter of minutes instead of a whole day, uh, be a great yeah. step forward for us. That'll release a lot of volunteer time Absolutely. to do more important things <clears throat> and learn skills. Absolutely. It is important to note that if you're going to reuse wire, you don't ever want to wind up five wires at once, do you? Because it would be a no. nightmare getting out no, again. You wouldn't. You wouldn't ever roll it out again. But a lot of your wire, you end up throwing away. Yeah, it's, it's, been it's all burnt. It's damaged, and you can't reuse it. So yeah, in our case, it doesn't matter. So. Yeah, so it's good to know if you've got damaged fencing that you don't want to use again, you can just wind the whole fence up, all five wires at one go. Beautiful. Not bad, is it? No, it's very quick. Phil, it's been wonderful working out here with the Blazade volunteers. Um, it's been good fun using new machinery with you guys. It's beautiful. That's good. And, um, just the sort of thing we're looking for. Beautiful. Yeah. I love, I love really it when good. a plan comes together. Good Cheers, job. mate. Good Thanks. On you. Very good, Tim. Thank you. So with the first trial out of the way and the boys from Blazade suitably impressed, it was time to head out to a real farm and a real fence line. A real mess of a fence line that's owned by a mate of mine, Tim, up in Briagalong in the beautiful East Gippsland of Victoria. And here we had the chance to put this machine through its true paces. <laughs> Tim. Tim, how you going? How are you, mate? Good to see you. Nice to meet a Tim. Welcome to Brave Life. Thank you very much. <laughs> now you've got some problems with your fences, obviously. I've got some pretty ratty fences that need rolling Just, up and yeah. replacing. And you've been having trouble doing that? Uh, it's hard work. Yeah, and it's a bit dangerous too. Yeah, look at this stuff. Yeah. So, right. so I've got something that I want to try out yep. that I reckon might solve your problems. I'm keen to see it. You've got a couple of hundred metres here, I believe. Three or four hundred. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's try and do it in one go and Fantastic. see if the machine works. Yes. This fence is really going to give us a workout. It's not only rusty and old and the posts have destroyed, but have a look at some of these knots. If you were trying to wind this up with an ordinary winder, these would foul the winder and give you all sorts of dramas. So I think this is going to be a perfect test for the Walters model with its big wire guide. So we've got lots of different types of wire that we've got to take off the fence. I reckon the uh, the barbed wire is occasionally held on with a staple. Sometimes it's held on with some interesting fixtures, to say <laughs> the least. So I reckon what we do first is we take off all these bits of wire that are going to jam up the works for anything. Righto. Um, take out any staples that we find, and then we'll we'll roll up the barb first, and then we'll we'll set Attack our sights the on the plane going through the Great. through the posts. So it's hammer time. Yes, please, mate. Yeah, get everything off. 
All right, so this is the first torture test. We've got the barb off the posts. Um, it's a good two odd hundred meter run. Um, and it's being pulled through long grass. It hasn't been grazed in quite a while. There's also a lot of dodgy knots and a lot of cut off bits of wire still attached to it. I'm a little bit concerned because the wire is so rusted that it might actually break halfway along with the strain of winding it up. But I'm more interested in how is this machine going to be pulling the barb through such a long distance through long grass. So I'm going to chuck it in, attach it to the main wheel and let's rip. Once I've got the tension on the wire, it feeds through this feeder really, really well and doesn't tend to catch the edges. <laughs> All right, I think we've got to lower, lower our expectations a little bit. So with 250 meters, we've just pasted out, it's 250 meters of rusty barbed wire through long grass. I reckon we're gonna either break the wire or just fail completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it off at about 150 metres and we're going to try and drag that through. I think the problem is the drag in the grass. Okay, we're cutting it now. Let's see how it goes. About 150 metres of grass. Well, that was super easy. I think we actually cut it off a bit short. We could have gone a little bit longer. We're trying to find that sweet spot. Certainly, if you're using this all day, every day, I think you'd very quickly learn your ultimate measurement and length of wire. I think we're gonna have a second shot on this barb and we'll try and see if we can get a few more meters out of it. And how easy is that? Okay, so we paced out our first attempt and it was more like about 300 meters. When we cut the wire off, it was more like 100. It did that really easy. So now we're gonna try it out on the remaining 200 meters of wire and see how it copes with 200 meters of rusty barbed wire through long, ungrazed grass. change of plans that was a bit tough you can say i am actually getting it wound on but really it's ridiculous turns out tim was available i've sent him up halfway just to pull it up out of the grass a little bit and if you've got a partner maybe you can get an even longer run why didn't i think of this before seriously yep And we're away. Well, Tim, it's full bale of wire. <laughs> I don't think we'll be saving this one, will we? Nah. Oh, don't need to go to the gym either. This is good. Get exercise and get to wind up wire as well. Well done. So I think it's probably exceeded expectations. We just had to be a little bit clever. We're reeling up a really long run in long grass. Bloke halfway up, just lifting it up out of the ground. Made all the difference. You only got a few more k's to do, but yeah, well, we'll get there. You did, you did a good couple hundred meters of this the other day. Yeah, easily by yeah, hand, by hand. over and hard on you. How long did that up. take? Oh, good few hours to do a couple hundred meters. It's it's hard work and okay. in long grass and twisted wire, but this is a beauty. So it took us what 10, 15. Yep. including taking the wire off. Yep. Let's get into the plane, see how she left. Okay. All right, so this time, a little bit easier. We've got about 200 metres of rusty old eight gauge. In through the wire feeder, same as normal. A little bit of a kink on the end. Stick it in one of the holes, only just fits. I tell you what, you wouldn't want any thicker wire than this, so it's a good test on it for will it bundle up. It's as rusty as all get out, and there's a few knots that you'll probably see come through as we go. Let's start. Much easier this time.
not to flying through without a problem. Now I will mention one safety thing that I do, and that is I put a chain on the end of the wire as I'm winding it up. Now the reason why I do that is I don't want it flicking around and hitting me in the head or cutting my face as I get that last coil or two coming on board. So I think a really good safety practice if you're using a device like this is to always put a flexible weight on the end and it's going to save you a trip to the doctor. Plus, always wear safety glasses when you're working with wire. Where's the next fence?